Welcome to Flipped Classroom. Today's lesson is on the classification essay. Imagine you receive a phone call at school or at work and the person on the other end says, Honey, bring home a box. What type of box is the person asking for? A box of chocolates? A carton of Chinese food? Or a storage box? To answer this question, you'd have to classify the types of boxes. The goal of classification is to explain a pattern in a subject that might not have been previously noticed. For example, it is important to be able to know the three types of dogs in order to provide a forever home. When, when you go to the SBCA, they classify dogs into three types. The A dog, which is basically perfect, well-trained, hypoallergenic, the B dog, the B dog, which isn't quite perfect, might have a few discipline problems, not a purebred. And then the C dog. The C dog may have some aggression issues. It might not work well with children. You might need a big backyard. But knowing the type of dog before you adopt it will prepare the owners for the type of dog they have. The definition of classification is grouping according to similarities or differences. You need to have significant and informative groups. The ruling principle is the unifying idea or point of view in the act of classifying. For example, in this case, the ruling principle is reasons for steroid use. You would see it's been broken down into three types, health, athletic performance, and peer pressure. The reason that people classify is to make sense of a larger subject. For example, for example, a doctor may say, I can't figure out why people use steroids. If I knew, I could create preventative programs. It's important to avoid classifications based on stereotypes. Always use facts. For example, if your ruling principle is rich people, you would not want to divide the types into spoiled, snobby, and elitist. Those are stereotypes. Science tends to classify frequently. I can't figure out why only some of the fish in Davis Lake are dying. Your ruling principle is fish in Davis Lake. Then you would divide into types of fish, pike, trout, and carp. You'd explore the fish, which ones are dead, pike and carp, and which ones are alive, trout. This would help you understand why a certain type of fish can survive and others can die. Here's another example. There are numerous Christian religions. Since they all believe Jesus is the Son of God, why don't they worship together? The ruling principle is Christians, and you could divide it up into Catholics, Mormons, Baptists, Lutherans, the list goes on and on. Though they all believe in Jesus, they each have specific qualities unique to their faith. For example, Catholics tend to have more statues in their places of worship and they include the Virgin Mary in their prayers. Whereas Mormons have an American prophet, unlike the Catholics. And the specific examples could go on and on. Therefore, by classifying the types of Christians, people can target their own specific issues to know which church of, to know which place of worship best fits their belief system. It's always important to classify for a reason. In other words, have a point, a thesis. Avoid creating a dull list of categories. Always demonstrate critical thinking. And most important, avoid the so what effect. Here's an example. Chihuahuas, Doberman, Pinschers, Pit Bulls, and German Shepherds have four paws. So what? Why is that even important? It would be better for your thesis to be Chihuahuas, Doberman Pinschers, Pit Bulls, and German Shepherds are misunderstood dog breeds that are mislabeled as bad pets. Now you're demonstrating critical thinking. Often classification and definition genres are combined. One of the key differences is in classification you are looking for types, whereas in definition you are looking for characteristics. The first essay in this class is going to combine classification and definition genres. Your essay will look at what are the different types of superheroes? And the author lists eight different types. Then you're going to look at what are the characteristics 
of each of these superheroes. And again, the author lists eight types. Understanding the classification and definition of the superheroes presented in the article is the first step in essay number one. Thank you for joining me today in Flipped Classroom.